So I've had a bit of a bumpy road with this new AI video model, but that is all sorted out now. As it turns out, it looks like the wait was well worth it. So today we're gonna dive in with our usual battery of tests. And I've got good news because it looks like this model hits the triangle of fast, cheap, and good. Plus I've got a look at real time voice controlled AI video. Now, is it this? Change to a romantic comedy. I've always loved you. No, it is not, but it is pretty cool. And I think it serves as a good benchmark as to where we are with this technology. Plus there are some really cool use cases. All right, let's dive in. Admin note off the top, if you happen to notice a small cut that's on my nose and wondering what's that all about. Well, uh, I had to give a cat uh, some medicine today. So uh, I feel like we both walked away from that encounter feeling like we won the battle. So moving into our core coverage, this is a long overdue look at the new AI video model, C-Dance. C-Dance is the new AI video model from ByteDance and its rollout has, uh, well, to put it lightly, been chaotic. It initially came out in two different versions, a pro version and a mini version. Uh, ironically, the mini version was the only version available on Dreamina, which is ByteDance's own platform. But the pro version was released via a number of, uh, kind of a random spattering of platforms using APIs. And at that time, there seemed to be a number of issues with the API resulting in a bunch of failed generations and prompt kickback to the point where at least through my initial tests, I could not recommend this model. Thankfully, all of that does seem to have been resolved and C-Dance Pro is now in wide release and well, it, it actually works. You can try it on fall, openart.ai, replicate and a number more are being added. Uh, today, we're gonna be taking a look at it on Korea, uh, mostly because I have some credits to burn there and well, I really do like their new image model. So kicking off on the, well, to be honest, underwhelming side with text to video first, although it does get better. So our initial test was our man in a blue business suit and his wolf walking down a street in Vegas uh, as our runaway bride, our woman in a red dress runs behind him. Um, you know, overall, it's not awful. We definitely are getting our prompt coherence. Everything that I asked for is there. Uh, the, you know, the city itself does not look very Vegasy. Uh, we have our man in a blue business suit again, walking down the middle of the street, probably picking up another jaywalking ticket. Overall, I do have to say that minimal text prompting in text to video is not our friend here. For example, this is cinematic scene from a modern crime film. And well, I mean, I guess. I do appreciate the fact that our guy here seems as underwhelmed to be in this video as we are to watch this video. That said, you can get some pretty good stuff out of it if you utilize a longer prompt structure. Uh, for example, this is an output that I got uh, utilizing a VO3 prompt structure. This is actually uh, sort of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but found footage. Um, yeah, I mean, this output is pretty good. JSON style text prompts do seem to work pretty well. If you're not aware of what that is, I'll have a link down below to a VO3 video that I recently did that covered JSON prompting, uh, along with a prompt builder PDF that you can download there. But yeah, uh, it seems to work pretty well. Although obviously with text to video, you are still limited by what the model is going to choose to give you. For example, that monster back there is not the monster I had in mind, and, uh, nor is the uh, headless Statue of Liberty sitting on top of another building. Um, that said, everything else is it's all accounted for in this video. So yeah, JSON prompting works. Now, where I do think that the model does very good is with image to video. And that's actually good news because Korea just released their new image model, Korea One, and it looks pretty good. They are touting this model as an AI image generator that does not look AI generated. Yeah, it has a very, uh, very nice photographic quality to it. In fact, just exploring around with it, our prompts here are nothing more than a scene from a 1980s crime movie. Yeah, these look great. So hopping over to the video side of Korea and running these images, uh, pretty much promptless, gives us some pretty solid outputs. A uh, little bit of a stutter step there on our guy on the left. Boy, our guy on the right goes full Alec Baldwin at one point, doesn't he? Atmospheric shots like this do look very good. You can run outputs at either five seconds or 10 seconds. Obviously we are looking at a five second shot here. So the model does do a pretty good job of figuring out what to do with characters. Um, I mean, admittedly here, it's not a whole lot. The guy just bends over, picks something up and resumes position. Uh, but you know, at a 10 second generation here, you know, a few years ago, this guy would have uh, turned around, eaten that car, morphed into a horse and like rode away. So, you know, I'll take this. One thing that I have been really impressed with, and I'm not sure if this is uh, Korea One or Sea Dance or a combination of using them together, but uh, a lot of these outputs end up with this really nice kind of like film grain look to them. 
There, of course, has been a lot of commentary and punditry back and forth on grain removal in like 4K uh, restoration upscales of older movies. Uh, personally, I am pro grain. Kung Fu fight test, text to video. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty solid. Definitely on par with all of the other current, uh, you know, video generators. Um, you know, it's it's still got, you know, is it going to fool anybody into thinking these are two actors in a Kung Fu sequence? Absolutely not. Um, you know, it still has kind of the problems that they all have, like the fighters are not making contact with each other. And, you know, we do have an issue with kind of blurring fists here a little bit. Blurring fists, that sounds like a really cool Kung Fu movie. But overall, this is so much better than this was even just eight months ago. Image to video, interestingly, came out a lot more on the slow motion side. Um, there's some problems here. We just saw it like an occlusion with our not Bruce Lee character uh, punching through our other guy. But overall, I, there's a lot. There is, a, like, once again, a lot to like in here. The characters' faces do turn quite often. And when they, you know, return to camera view, they are the same characters still. Uh, I think there's, like, again, uh, small little bits that you could probably clip from this, speed up and run in enough times. And you've got a pretty, uh, well, cutty fight scene two quick takeaways before we move into what I think is kind of like Sea Dance's superpower. Um, for one, as as like a camera operator, I got to say that like Sea Dance is it has very it's it's very old school and kind of mature. A lot of the models lately have been focusing on a lot of wild camera moves and whatnot. Um, sea Dance really see, especially in the image to video side, really seems to like uh, you know very subtle light movement. And I gotta say, it's it's actually been kind of refreshing, just a well-composed image that isn't orbiting around or 360ing or doing anything crazy. Just, once again, uh, a really well-composed image. Even a shot like this, kind of a you know dark fantasy monster roaring, uh, created this using the Kriya One model and one of the style presets, uh, which obviously you can do on Kriya. Yeah, what I like about this is the fact that it is a lockdown shot. A lot of the other models would put a smash zoom in or out or some kind of orbit on this. You don't need that. This this is all we need for this shot. I do want to point out that I'm very happy I don't have to give this guy any medication. The other place that I think the model does a pretty good job is under the category of acting and emoting. As we see here in this scene, the prompt is nothing more than seen from a dramatic movie um, in which our guy at the table here is clearly telling everyone else that he thinks they're all in an indie movie about depression. So now for Sea Dance's superpower, one of the things that you can do is bring an image in, uh, you know, issue the beginning of a prompt and then have a cut to with a completely different action uh, and you'll essentially get it. So for uh, like, for example, for this shot, I issued a cut to uh, to the woman, a close up of her face. And, you know, sure enough, there it is. This does seem to happen around the five second mark, as I've previously noted. Uh, I think that with these longer uh, video extensions that that five second like area is essentially where the model ends up doing a handoff. So I think this is kind of an interesting, tricky way of uh, kind of creating a new image to video based off of your initial input image. So yeah, this looks pretty great. As always, is it perfect? Well, of course it is not. Uh, take for example, this shot, which kind of had a very like Orient Express kind of vibe to me. Uh, so I issued a cut to uh, the reverse angle where the woman would see a body lying on the ground, uh, the murder on the Orient Express, if you will. Uh, so this shot came out like this, uh, which, you know, actually we kind of got what I asked for. I was relatively surprised that we did not get prompt pushback on this, but you know, obviously there are some problems here, including the fact that our guy is wearing his jacket backwards, unless that's a clue. And in a subsequent re-roll, uh, our guy came off less as a murder victim and uh, well, more like a guy who is trying to develop a new way to vape. Now, in terms of actual cost per generation, I mean, there is always a bit of a fog of war around it, uh, namely because of APIs, platforms, and the credit system. Uh, that said, I would definitely say, as Korea does here, that it's 10 times cheaper than VO3, and it does run a lot faster. They said in less than two minutes, I feel like I did not wait that long. So while I wish I could give you a hard cost per generation, the truth is it's going to vary from platform to platform. So uh, I don't know, discuss down in the comments. Uh, maybe everyone can put their heads together and figure out where the best bargain is. Overall, very happy to have ByteDance back you know, with a state-of-the-art model. Okay, let's go check in on real-time AI video generation that is controlled by your voice. Uh, but first, we do have a segment. This is relative to your interests. Uh, you definitely do want to check this out. 
checking in with Recraft, who I have covered a number of times on the channel before. I think you guys know I'm a pretty big fan of theirs. Additionally, they were kind enough to sponsor today's video, namely to let you know that they have prompt editing available on the platform. Now, some of you power users out there might be saying, well, yes, that's just GPT-40 and context. And well, yes, it is. But there are some pretty cool use cases for it, specifically on Recraft, one of which I think is wholly unique. So first off, if you are not a power user and everything I just said a minute ago sounded like total gibberish, these models allow you to edit your images with very basic text commands. For example, here we have our cyberpunk woman with long white hair walking down a snowy cyberpunk street. Uh, this was generated in High Dream. So what we can do, uh, for example, is just come up to this edit button here, and then we have our choices in terms of editing for GPT-40 low, uh, and then all the way up to Flux Contacts Max. Uh, let's give this uh, Flux a shot here. And very simply, I'm just going to give it the prompt, change the woman's hair to red. Uh, we'll hit the Recraft button, see what we get. And after just a few moments, we have the fastest dye job ever. Uh, here she is with our red hair, and uh, here is our original image. So as you can see, uh, pretty much a one-to-one. -one. A few other things that you can do to push this a little bit further, say once again, here's another image of our cyberpunk woman. Uh, once again, and giving her the red hair treatment, uh, we can then go in and edit this image and simply reprompt for something like have the woman turn around and walk away. We can kind of continue to iterate this. This kind of stuff makes for really good first frame, last frames when you're using image to video. Now, what's really handy about having both GPT-40 and Context both on the same platform is that they do have their strengths and weaknesses. Context, in my opinion, does very well for image manipulation. Uh, this is a like kind of a long running project that I've been having a little bit of trouble with. The overall idea here is small people in a big world. Um, the problem that we do run into quite often with image generators is that they do have a problem with the sense of scale. What I actually want with these two guys is to have them smaller. So not a problem, just simply prompt, make the people smaller. And sure enough, there we go. Exact same people, just smaller. Now on the GPT-40 side, and this is a pretty interesting use case. Uh, if you remember these images, we generated them up at our look at Recraft's Infinite Styles, which uh, is exactly actually what it sounds like. Uh, the link to that video will be down below in case you missed it. Now in that video, I was kind of lamenting the fact that we can't really do word balloons. Uh, like we can kind of fake them with ovals and some text, uh, but you know, they're not actual like comic book word balloons. Well, that got me thinking because GPT-40 is so good with text, uh, we could probably issue something like put a comic book word balloon pointed towards the man, the text should read, now I know what their plans are. And indeed we now have a legit comic book text balloon. And we can do the same with text voiceover boxes as well. So yeah, pretty handy. Now here is where things get pretty unique. So this is another image that I generated up utilizing Recraft's uh, vector art preset. Kind of has the vibe of The Prisoner, if anyone remembers that show. Um, but what's kind of cool about this is because this is vector art, um, we can now export it as an SVG file, and then you can bring it into Illustrator and, you know, continue to edit and play around with it. And I do mean you can bring it into Illustrator and play around with it and futz with it. As you can see, I I am still terrible with Illustrator. You know, between everything that we've looked at over the course of these Recraft videos, including once again, the infinite styles linked down below, we are seeing a very interesting and powerful generation platform for designers and stylistic explorers. As always, the fine folks at Recraft have been kind enough to hook us up with a promo code for $11 off of any plan. There is a free plan for you to try out. And then if you look at the price of the basic plan, well, with that $11 off coupon code, I mean, Kind of a kind of a no-brainer. As always, my thanks to Recraft for sponsoring today's video, and hope you guys give it a shot because it is a lot of fun. Rounding out, this is Dreamstream from Dream Computing. Uh, this is uh, in beta right now. There's a wait list down below. Uh, I signed up for it, kind of forgot about it, got access, and played around with it. Thought it was really fun. So at its core, this is not something that we have not necessarily seen in the past. It's it's very it does have that kind of like morphe um, like uh, animate diff uh, kind of look to it. Um, I personally love that kind of hallucinogenic warpy thing, but what's cool is that it's what it's generating right now is based off of what I am saying, or at least it's in visual interpretation of what I'm saying. I'm not saying anything particularly specific right now, so it is kind of, uh, you know, 
generating sort of like weird things here. Uh, we can try it out. It does have a bit of a latency issue going on right now. Um, so let's just try it out and uh, let's just say like a, a pirate ship at sea. See how long that takes. Okay, we got to our pirate ship at sea. I think I probably did cut to this, uh, considering that it did it did take a little bit uh, to get here. That said, I am giving it a ton of text to chew on here. So um, well, I can't wait to see what it does when it gets to chew on. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, it's, it's kind of neat, right? Um, again, not something we haven't seen before, but where I think that things get pretty interesting and cool is when you take it to the outside world and you start using it as it, like for events. I mean, I think that this would be a lot of fun for the participants here or set up as an AI installation at a museum as they did here. Um, just kind of you know, an, an ever evolving moving piece of art. That's, that's, kind of, that's kind of cool. Ultimately, it does look like they are trying to move into the hardware space as well. So you could you know, buy a dream stream as well, but uh, more than likely it'll probably be this uh, custom solutions where you could you know, rent one for your event or exhibition. So um, yeah, uh, it's here. If you, if, if you would like to check it out, link is down below as well as the link to the beta. Uh, I do think that, you know, sign up for it. It's just kind of fun to play around with. And again, if you've been following the channel, you know I love the weird warpy stuff. So uh, I couldn't help but take uh, one of the Dreamstream outputs and bring it through Astra for a bold creative. Um, and yeah, I mean, I mean, it still stays warpy and weird, um, which is good. But you can see exactly how much Astra really kind of cleans this up. I think that this is where something like uh, Astra really kind of shines. And hey, remember what I said last time, Topaz, we have creative bold. I would like to see creative spicy. Let's kick this up a notch even further. So that's it for today. Some rumors swirling around that I will probably be very busy throughout the week. So uh, I will definitely be back pretty soon. In the meantime, I'm going to put some Neosporin on my nose. Uh, as always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.